South Bend, Indiana, Mayor Pete Buttigieg is the only 2020 presidential candidate in the race who served in Afghanistan. On Monday, he spoke to our Musadiq Bidar about his views on the country. I think that the, the one thing that everybody should be able to agree on, Democrats, Republicans, the Afghan government, the Taliban, the international community, and me, is that we're leaving. And the question is, are we going to leave well or are we going to leave poorly? Uh, what, what you see now, I, I fear, is uh, an approach that's driven by the American political calendar. Uh, we need to wrap this up quickly. And we do need to move to where there is only the, the minimum required residual force to protect American lives. Uh, but we need to make sure this is done in a way that makes sense. That means making sure the Afghan government is at the table, not only the Taliban. Uh, and it means making sure we get some assurances on counterterrorism so that we're not back there again in a few years. Uh, but the bottom line is that we have got to step away. And Musadiq Bidar joins me now from Des Moines. He is a CBS News 2020 campaign reporter based in the state. Musadiq, thanks for being with us. What more can you tell us about Pete Buttigieg's foreign policy ideas? Elaine, uh, Mayor Buttigieg told me yesterday that he wants his foreign policy message to be one that connects America's values and interests abroad. Uh, he said that America's commitment to human rights and protecting democracy is being questioned right now because of President Trump. Uh, and he told me that if he's elected president, he wants not only his military actions, but his diplomatic actions to be oriented towards protecting those short shared values of protecting human rights and democracy around the world. Well, does Buttigieg believe the Taliban should be involved in these peace talks? He told me he would welcome them to the table. He said that there is a place where they can be a part of the Afghan government in the future. But he said they have to commit to laying down their arms and they have to commit to working as part of a democratic government. He cautioned, however, that uh, we have to ensure that the Taliban will be willing to protect human rights and that they will commit to not providing a haven for terrorists uh, to work out of Afghanistan. And he said it will be up to the United States and the international community to leverage that and make sure that uh, we hold them accountable to those promises of protecting human rights, uh, protecting civil liberties, and making sure that uh, terrorists don't find a haven in Afghanistan. Hmm. Well, more broadly, Musadiq, are the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq uh, an issue that's important to Iowa voters? It comes up from time to time. It's certainly not at the top of uh, people's minds as much as health care and climate change issues that affect their day to day lives here. But uh, folks bring it up in the terms of America's standing in the world. A lot of people here uh, are not so sure the war in Iraq was worth it. And then others, when you talk to them about Afghanistan, uh, what's on their mind is bringing troops home. Uh, so it's something that comes up, uh, but it's not an issue that gets talked about as much as uh, as some of the other issues here on the campaign trail. I want to ask about the ground game. Buttigieg's campaign announced it plans to open 20 offices over the next 20 days with a staff of nearly 100 people. And according to our numbers, Buttigieg has spent 23 days in Iowa with 48 events. Why is Pete Buttigieg increasing his focus on the state? Well, he told a large crowd in Iowa City yesterday. The campaign estimated there were about 800 people there uh, to support him. And he said it's time for his campaign to begin laying down the groundwork to win the Iowa caucuses. Uh, earlier in the day, uh, after opening up a field office in Cedar Rapids and then in Iowa City, he told reporters that uh, pretty soon other campaigns are going to start playing catch up to him. Uh, and he made it pr pretty clear that he's in it to win the Iowa caucuses. So what a about that. How uh, does his strategy there in Iowa compare to what other candidates are doing in the state? Well, as far as the ground game is concerned, he's now well ahead of the pack. Uh, he's got about 100 staffers, as you mentioned. Uh, and then following behind him are Senators Warren, uh, Elizabeth Warren, Senator Bernie Sanders, and Vice President Joe Biden. Vice President Biden has about 75 full-time staffers here on the ground. Uh, Senator uh, Warren has about uh, 65. And uh, Senator Sanders has about 66 uh, full-time staffers here in the Hawkeye State. So compared to some of the other candidates, he's now well ahead of them, and we'll be keeping an eye to see if the other campaigns uh, begin ramping up their ground operations here in Iowa. 
Well, earlier in the show, we talked about a Joe Biden advisor who said that Iowa is critical, but not a must-win state. Um, what are you hearing on the ground there? Are other candidates sharing in that sentiment at all? Not as much. Uh, everybody that talks about Iowa, some of the candidates, they say they're in it to win it. Uh, a lot of the strategists that we speak with uh, say that in the past, the Iowa caucuses have had at most maybe three tickets for candidates to come out. But with such a large field this time around, there are four, maybe five tickets out of Iowa. So a lot of candidates, while they are in it to win it, it may not necessarily be the end of the road if they end up second or third place. Uh, but to continue on and continue doing well, continue raising money and uh, gaining support from uh, voters across in other early states, they need to win here in Iowa. All right, Musadiq Bidar with the view from Iowa for us. Musadiq, thank you. Thanks, Elaine.